Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Boomer Bites podcast. I'm Augie Anderson, your host. And today I have Lori Peary with the Peary Agency with me. She is going to be talking to us today about having a solid aging and longevity plan to ensure the best health, the best wealth, and the best quality of life to live your best life. Right, Lori? That's right. That's our goal. That's our goal. So here's my, here's my question that like, really, I'm curious. I'm a late bloomer when it comes to planning. I'm going to fess up. I'm going to be transparent because I feel like a lot of people are like me. I'm late to the game, but it's better to be late than not show up. That's how I feel. Are there a lot of people like me out there? Would you say, Lori? So, you know, Augie, I think you need to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Just the fact that you're here doing this amazing podcast is is a sign that you really care about the, the topics that are important to people as we age. And um, I am a corporate sponsor of Helping Seniors, and um, we talk a lot about having an aging plan, aging plan and not to put your head in the sand and uh, get your ducks in a row. Uh, Carrie Fink, the director, refers frequently to the farm animals <laughs> in his <laughs> script. <laughs> but but the truth is that life comes on like a freight train, does it not? It does. I'm telling you, and, I'm pushing the seven so, out here, and yeah. and you know what? We're not the people that our grandparents were. We're different, no, and we no. have longer lifespans. We do. And I feel like if you're not prepared for that, I'm just going to say it straight up: you're screwed. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a, a national long-term care specialist and I'm endorsed by Dave Ramsey. So I work with a lot of people that from the day that they come to me, what, one of the things we talk about is what does your aging plan look like? Um, meaning if you're going to, when I do a worksheet for them, I show them that your life expectancy is 95 based on your age today and where you live. And if you're 60 today and you're going to live for 35 more years, what's that going to look like? How are you going to manage that? Um, how are you going to manage your health care? How are you going to manage your finances? Um, what is your plan? And sometimes that plan may include a long-term care policy. Sometimes it'll include some other strategies to protect money and make money last longer. But what is your plan? So coming back to your, your question, I have 37-year-olds who are very proactive about their aging plan. In fact, they already have their doors widened for, for wheelchairs because they want to stay in their home even if they need care. And I have 75 year olds who are just now getting around to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's hope for me. <laughs> well, I love that. And I think the thing, you know, my mother is going to be 90. Uh -huh. She's an amazing pro ager. And, um, she really prepared herself. She has the insurance for long term care. She's had it a long time, been paying yeah. into it a long time. Yeah. And she fortunately doesn't need it even going into 90, but she will at some point. I'm, it's inevitable, you know, yeah. but she's going on 90. But because she has it, I feel more secure. My mom feels more secure. Yeah. Right. I don't think uh, people understand the peace of mind you have when you do have a strategy. You have a strategy, and 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 the the problem is many people people make assumptions that are incorrect. Um, for example, um, they think that Medicare is going to pay for care. Um, Medicare does not pay for long term care. Medicare, there are some nuances with what Medicare does and does not pay for, and there are either there are also nuances with the type of Medicare plan that you have. If you have an Advantage plan, you're going to get less of a benefit on skilled nursing than if you have a supplement. Um, Advantage plans are different than supplement plans um, in terms of their limitations and restrictions. Um, so it's important, especially when you're first aging into the to Medicare space, that you speak with an advisor who can say, uh, tell you all of your options. Um, of course, let you make the decision on what's best for your family. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to be real savvy about that first conversation when you have uh, your first meeting with a Medicare agent. I'm a Medicare agent and I help people all the time understand does it make more sense to go to an advantage plan? Does it make more sense to go to a supplement? More importantly, many people that are already 65 are still on their work plans. 
Yeah, um, like my husband, we talked about it with you with us. Yeah, I, there is I, this thing. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. There is this thing called the Inflation Reduction Act that, believe it or not, it's not going to uh, reduce inflation. <laughs> but one of the things that they're messing with is the employer coverage being creditable in the eyes of CMS. So a lot of people that are on employer work plans after the age of 65 have got to make sure that it's the CMS recognizes it as a creditable coverage. And in many cases, their, to move to a Medicare option is uh, better coverage and less expensive than a work plan because of the high deductibles and co-insurance responsibilities with the work plan. But that's, that's one of the many spokes in the wheel of an aging plan. Um, another thing that you mentioned, which you're so right in doing, is that we are living longer. We're living longer because of pharmaceuticals and technology. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're living better. <laughs> we be propped up by pharmaceuticals and technology. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, but more people, believe it or not, are more afraid of running out of money than they are of dying. The reason is because those things called pensions don't exist for many people. Like teachers have pensions that last for the rest of their life, and maybe government workers have pensions. But a lot of us have what we call a 401k, right? Yeah. Which is qualified money. Um, generally, it's in the market, and a 401k can, this is not a technical term, can become a 201k in the mark when the if the market crashes. And I remember what 2008 felt like, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you remember what that felt like, but. We well, have, I know it from the real estate perspective. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. We have some uncertain times and what people, we talked about this a little bit before we got on the recording and what a lot of people don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And there is a way to protect 401k money from, you can never lose it again. You can still have it indexed to the market. Um, you can create your own pension to have lifetime income and you can sleep at night knowing that regardless of what happens in politics, Regardless of, on what with what happens in the stock market, your money is safe because it's not in the market; it's indexed to the market. So that's one of the strategies that I help people with is understanding how how to how to not lose any money ever again. Warren Buffett says he's got two rules about money. Money. The first one is to never lose money. The second rule is to never break rule number one. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So I think that's really great. One of um, one of the things that inspired me to do this Boomer Bites podcast is seeing how many seniors, boomers, some are before the boomer age, struggling. And I want to, you mentioned Kerry Fink, and I just learned his name yesterday with Helping yeah. Seniors of Brevard. Yes. I'm a big proponent of that. It's on all the pages to please help support them because yeah, honestly, one day, I was watching television and I saw um, a 70 year old couple in their 70s, mid 70s, could not afford the rent because they could they they weren't they didn't own their house they were renting and they couldn't afford oh the gosh. rent anymore. They yeah. were living in their car. Oh my goodness! So that is to me that's I'm very inspired to help people at many levels. You know, some people like me we. We need that help from you to plan a better future and other people need help to get a meal on the table. Exactly. So I wanted yeah. to interject that now that yeah, I am a huge proponent of helping seniors of Brevard yeah. and, and I support them wholeheartedly. And I was so happy to hear that you do too. Yes. I'm a corporate sp sponsor for them. And actually I've done some podcasts with them and I've been on their YouTube station. So as a long-term care plan specialist, but the, one of the things, one of their, one of their, um, their uh, companies that they work closely with is called Seniors Helping Seniors, and they actually recruit and hire um, other seniors to help those seniors that may need companionship or may may need a ride to the doctor. So that's that's just one of the many, many, many things that they do. Uh, but they are an amazing 501c3 um, organization in Brevard County. Every year they have a raffle in october and they raffle off a really nice car and that's wow. one of their biggest fundraisers i think that's and incredible so, yeah so any way that anyone can get involved in um supporting them um financially supporting them in re referring business to them i i am always recording re re 
referring other business owners in my networking sphere to, to be involved as a sponsor because the truth is that not all seniors are poor. <laughs> I know. Uh, but a lot of them, a lot of us, I guess I'm a senior, we have resources. We just, we want to know who to trust. Yes. Right? I think that's and really so, important. So knowing who to trust is a really big deal in yeah. terms of how you're getting help, whether it's getting help painting your house or getting help, um, you know, what, whatever it is that you need help with, they're a resource and um, they're, they're highly, highly qualified. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a sidebar. That's a really, that is a thing. sidebar. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned yeah. that. I also want to mention everyone that Lori has done a nice checklist and aging oh, yeah. longevity checklist yeah. that you'll be able to get at boomerbitespodcast.com. It's episode two and everything that we talk about or share today will be available on that podcast episode two at Boomer bites podcast and remember we said that this is an organic document it's not one of those polished pieces it's really something that's fluid um that i'm updating all the time but the point is i just in my experience talking to a lot of different people i want to just bring awareness to the fact that if you don't have your your power of attorney in place um you need to have that if you're over the age of 18 that's not a senior i mean senior in high school maybe you need to have a power of attorney to help help your family and your loved ones navigate things that may be in your name only yes um, so you know getting a, a, aligned with a uh, an estate attorney that again someone that you like and trust um you know you and i both know one <laughs> yes i'm gonna say her name she's gonna be a guest robin cornell oh awesome. I've, i went to her and that's how i yeah. found you so you yeah. know what the network really does work because works, people yeah. know people and that's how we trust. I trusted you because she sang your praises and like, I feel like I got a whole team that's going to be helping me to age with peace of mind. Yes. It's peace of mind. It's, you, it's, it's very scary, especially in this economy right now, but you want, you want to make sure your money's not going to run out. Right. You know, you're going to keep up all your expenses and yeah. just there's a myriad of things that we need to do and have in place. Have in place. Yeah. And, and, and it's sometimes it's scary and I'll tell you how it's a little bit scary. I'm going to tell you, I think when you're married again, it's yeah. become scarier. Now yeah. you have my kids and you have your kids and we have stuff together and you got to talk about it. You have you to. You have to plan together what's going to happen with your home, your th everything, just everything. And if you have a plan in place, yeah, you not only are going to feel good, you're going to make it easy on your family because exactly. you've got everything buttoned up. Yeah. Don't put right? your head in the sand. Right. Don't put your head in the sand. And I did for a long time. And it's not because I didn't care. It's like I've always been kind of that younger mentality. I don't yeah. try and look young or try and be something I'm not. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to talk about that in later episodes. But you think you just kind of think you're going to live forever. And I'll tell you, I, I, my husband before Ray passed away in 2012, we did not have insurance. Had we planned more effectively, yeah. I would have not gone through such trauma in my life. I've learned from that experience right and i've been married just a little over a year so it's not like we've been waiting and sitting on the fence but yeah. we, i said we have to do this we really yeah. have to do this i made the appointment and the whole boomer bites podcast to me is about helping boom baby boomers and you seniors i mean it's like boomers are my my thing but living your best life and living, living your, your best, best life, life means having yeah. a good plan for yeah. everything a good plan and and, a, and an awareness of, of the things like um, I am not a nutritionist and I, you know, I, I try to do everything I can to stay mobile, but even lis listening to a lot of the th podcasts that are out there now on functional medicine and in my world of long-term care planning, you know, dementia is a really big part of the conversation and they say, and whoever they are, I don't know if they're right, but they say that Alzheimer's is the type three diabetes, meaning it's insulin resistance. Now, I would have never known that if I really didn't press into the different nutritional, functional medicine podcast and understand, you know, how, how, you know, nutrition is a really big deal. 
you know. It was a very big and, deal. I'm on a kick, girl. Yeah. I have been eliminating foods with preservatives. And they are sorry. the killer. Preservatives yeah. are horrible for you. They're horrible. They cause inflammation. Inflammation causes problems. And we start minding everything. We start, you know, I think we're older, we're wiser. And I listened to a podcast with my husband, Ray, we were, we were going on a trip and I'm telling you, it was mind blowing how they been poisoning us with these preservatives forever and yeah. eliminating them is very hard because everything seems to have preservatives in them. You think, Oh, I'm going to have a low carb wrap. It's better for me. Oh, you no. look at, you know what you, instead of reading just the nutrition label, read the ingredients. Yeah. Shop on the outside of the store. Yep. Whole yeah. Foods. Yep. So back to us. Um, what are what would you say three steps you can take to start a, a plan? What what do, what do people you have the checklist, review yeah. the checklist, obviously. Let's do that. And then what's three easy steps for people to go, hey, this is gonna get me in the right direction. Oh, let's see. Well, I would say your estate documents are are really top of the mind. I would say if you're over the age of sixty or younger, even to start looking at a long-term care plan. It may include a policy, it may not. If you decide that you've got $17,000 a month to pay for your long care, long-term long care for five years, then yay, you've got lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> but generally people, even if they're smart enough to have accumulated that kind of wealth, they are the reason they have wealth is be, they've been smart with money. So you know, don't, don't, don't pay full price, have quality of care in place for your long-term care plan. Um, life insurance is a really big deal. Um, as you know, you know, we yes. have a family member that passes away without it. It yes. can be devastating to a family. Um, make sure that your 401k money is in it, you know, not maybe not all of it, just maybe if you if you just protect half of it to 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 continue to earn indexing income, but never lose any money again. That's a really big deal. Um so yeah, I mean those those would be the top three. I think that um, there's a lot of other things that people naively do without realizing that they're at risk. For example, one of those things is putting your children on your bank account. If your child gets a divorce or if your child gets sued, your bank account be, can become part of the litigation and the judgment. So don't do that. Get that power of attorney, those estate documents in place instead. Um, Another thing to, I'm all about protection and risk management. Um, freeze your credit with the credit bureaus so that your identity doesn't get stolen. You know, because I can't tell you how many people I've met with that have had their identity stolen and people have gone out and bought new cars, new cars, you know, all kinds of things before it got caught. So if you go to the credit bureaus and just freeze your credit, you can very easily thaw it when you need to. Um, but that's, that's a, uh, always on the top of my list when I, you know, especially when I deliver a long-term care policy, I say, these are some of the things, some of the other ways that you can protect yourself, your identity and your resources. Just be safe, be smart with the things that you're doing. I don't understand what freeze your credit is. Okay. Freezing your credit means that um, they, they put a hold on your, on your credit with all three credit bureaus. So you can still use all, all of your active credit, but no one can come out and open up a new account uh -huh. in, in your name. If, you're, if your stuff has gotten on the black web, your social security number, your date of birth, if anything has been compromised, somebody can come in and start borrowing money using your name and your credentials. If your credit is frozen, they won't. I, my car broke down a couple months ago and I was going to... Um, I was gonna to had to buy a new car. I was gonna uh, pay cash for the car. The It was on a Sunday, so I couldn't get to the bank to get the cash out. And they said, well, just finance it today and then you can pay it off, you know, when, when you, tomorrow or whatever. Well, I submitted the application to buy, get a loan to buy the car and my credit was frozen. I couldn't even myself, uh, borrow money, which makes me feel really safe that no one else can either. Now I can yeah. use my pen and thaw my credit. Like if I have a refinance, which I did a couple of years ago, I told my guy, you got 10 days to pull my credit to, you know, just to prove that I'm credit worthy, but it's going to lock up again. So it's just a way, it's a really base, it's a Clark Howard trick. 
You know, I don't know if you know who Clark Howard is. I don't. Another, I don't. I'm not going to act like I know when I don't, but he, I, I want to know. Money guy. He's another money guy that does podcasts. He's been around forever. He boasts about getting two years out of a razor. He wears the same shirt, I'm sure, that he wore 20 years ago. He's very frugal, <laughs> but he's a mega billionaire. <laughs> So, you know, freeze your credit, have a Roth, you know, IRA, make sure that you're, you're as much as you can, can be growing tax free. If you have a, an opportunity to get a 401k and your work, always let your employer match it to the extent that they can. Um, you know, there's just some, some tricks like that. There's a lot of different tricks like that, that, you know, if you're mindful of just asking questions, um, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of things that we can do to protect our identity, to protect our wealth, um, and to just live a good life. And I'll tell you, since I've been starting this process, Ray and I, we feel really good that we, we have a team. Yeah. We have a team of people helping us that are good at what they do. Yes. Now I'm important. good at what I do, but I'm yeah. not good at what you do. Yeah. And nor do I want to be. Thank you and very I'm much. I'm not good at what you do. <laughs> so, so that's the beauty of it is when you can have experts in, in these necessary essentials of aging in a in a way that is secure mm -hmm. and and stress free man you've done a you've done a service to yourself if you do that yeah that's what i believe that's right that's right all right so we're going to wrap this up because thank you so much for doing this Aggie. hey it's awesome my that pleasure doing, please spread people. the word because you know what yeah. i have so many topics i have like 35 topics with subtopics because Wow. Baby boomers have lots of stuff going on. Lots. Yes. This is one aspect yes. of what we have got. Because some of our parents have dementia. They're aging. We have to understand their aging plan. Exactly. Not only do you have to understand yours, exactly. you have to understand theirs. theirs yeah. Because That's they have one. Right. And I have to understand my mother's to help yeah. her. You know, yeah. so it's it's like, it, and you look at it, you feel like you're reading Greek. Because yeah. you're not familiar with it, but it, you know, learning from you, yeah. Robin, and these wonderful people that are experts at helping us. Like they didn't have this back in the day, as many right. people just at, there to assist you and guide you so that you're really being proactive as a pro ager. Because that's mm -hmm. what I promote being a pro ager, you're accepting aging is beautiful and yeah. it's not complicated when you are planning and managing and enjoying life right that's right that's right so Good i stuff. thank you again Lori's thank checklist you. again is available at the boomer bites .com. thanks again Lori. i really thank appreciate you. your time and this was very informative and we look forward to talking to you again okay thank you so much